Hello everyone, my name is a Fox. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the GPD G1 again, AMD 7600 MXT in their eGPU enclosure. However, in this video, we're going to be doing two different things. Uh, this is the GPD WinMax 2. However, it is the first version, so the 6800U version. If we take a look at the back, you can see the USB-A port here. But we're actually going to be taking a look at GPD's supplied M2 adapter that they provide. So this is the M2 to Oculink adapter that GPD provides. Here's a screenshot of it. So it's a bundle. It's the one meter Oculink cable with the M2 adapter. Now they do not provide a uh, cover for the GPD WinMax 2. So you are either going to have to modify the cover that comes on your GPD WinMax 2 or 3D print something like you can see right here. It is unfortunate that they're going that way. I don't know why. I guess they don't think that they're going to have enough numbers where they can actually... Uh, qualify sending this out so that'll be one thing that if enough people's voices are heard maybe gpd will change their mind however on all of gpd's latest models this is the gpd and max 2740u uh, that just came out this has oculink native on the back so that's a, an avenue that you can take it as well as taking a look at the gpd win 4 you can see the oculink port that that's the three and a half millimeter port the Oculink port that's right there, and as well as the GPD Win Mini. So GPD is trying to accommodate this entire ecosystem with their new product lines. You can get the M2 adapter for the older stuff, but the GPD Win 4 with 6800U doesn't really have a nice way of doing that where you can mod that in there because there's only one M2 slot. Uh, so, and then likewise for other types of devices that are out there, they don't really accommodate it that well either. So you'd have to look at the GPD G1 using it via Thunderbolt. The GPD G1 also works for Linux. Uh, so you can see right here. Now I've already have li a Ryzen adjust up. So, but let me do LSPCI. We're going to do 7600. And you can see that it's loaded just fine. And if I do Vulkan Info, Rad V, you can see that we are loaded up. The driver is loaded for both of these identified. So not only is Rad V loaded up for the 6800U, the 680M that's located on the package, the, the APU itself, but we also have it for the 7600M XT. And that you can see is right here. So the, the open source Rad V driver is loaded right now, and that's what we're taking a look at. So we're going to take a look at some gameplay demos of what the GPDG1 on Linux can accomplish. So this is Sekiro, and more importantly, what we're looking at here is we are running this game at 4K. However, we are running at low settings right now, so low quality settings. So let's kind of understand of what's going on here. Uh, first, is there... There seems... Oh. <laughs> Poor giant chicken. So there is a thing that we need to talk about here. Uh, we can show on the on that side over there. So if we kind of zoom in, you can see that we're using all 120 watts that is available on the GPU itself. And that will dynamically change if we lower the resolution, which we'll show in just a moment. Let me go ahead and take care of this guy. Take a look at frame times while we have a little bit of action on screen. Okay, so do I have anyone coming towards me? Uh, that dude's over there. He's looking for something, and he saw me. So let me kind of just tent you up here. All right, while he's doing that, let me go ahead and go to 720p. Okay, so instantly switched. No particular problem. And take a look at how much power we went down to. So right now, oh man, this guy just chucked something at me. We're at 40 watt right now. Uh, and really we should be around like between 30 and 50 watt when we're running at this. But uh, if you take a look at our frame time graph, it's way smoother overall. We just dipped, take a look at our power. Our power went down to about 22 watt, 23 watt. And you can see that it went back up. I have noticed that I have had periodic dips just for whatever reason, but power seems to go down a bunch. And I'm really not certain why that's the case. This guy is looking for something. Let's see if we can do a different resolution. Uh, let me do, let me do 1080p. All right, so now we're at 1080p. And we're at 65 watt right now. Eighty watts. 
you can see it's smooth as silk on Linux and runs uh, really great. Okay, so this is uh, Sekiro. Let's go ahead and take a look at some other games that are possible on Linux. All right, so here we are. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Cyberpunk. Now, Cyberpunk is going to be interesting to me because... Oh, yeah, of course. Why is it defaulting to DOSBox? Uh, let's go here, and I want to tell everything to compatibility layer. That's why. Uh, I don't want to do... Let me do Proton Experimental. All right, so here we are. I'm going to try to run at 4K. We'll see how well this works, and I'll keep it at ultra settings. Um, AMD Fidelity. You know what? Let's actually go ahead and take away upscaling. I want to do uh, 100 on FOV because I don't like going anything less than that. Okay, so we are now going to be running at 4K with ultra settings and no image upscaling technique whatsoever. Now, the thing that always interests me about this is that uh, Linux is actually really, really good at running Cyberpunk. There's actually a few games, like Elden Ring runs better on Linux just because you don't have all that shader stutter that happens. There's a lot of work that happened on RadV to actually make Cyberpunk run much better than AMD drivers on Windows does today. And I'm curious how we're going to get about. So I think, if I recall correctly, I did ultra ray tracing. But I can't do ray tracing on... Um, Rad V drivers because they're not supported on Cyberpunk right now. As far as I'm aware, only Doom Eternal actually has any type of ray tracing working with Rad V, and even then, it's not really worth it because Doom Eternal doesn't really benefit all that much. Like you have some reflections, performance tanks. I, I wouldn't even enable it at all. But right now, you can see that we're pegged at 120 watts going through this benchmark here at 4K ultra settings, which is still very impressive to see. All right, let's see what happens when we go to like low settings. We'll just do low and run the benchmark. So we're going to do 4K low settings on Cyberpunk right now and see if just going to low settings makes a, an appreciable difference for us. All right, so this is pretty impressive. So we're going to low settings and 4K. Uh, right now we're doing 61 FPS. Uh, so if you were looking at, you know, at 4K low settings, that's still pretty good. Now, obviously, again, we can't do ray tracing because Radby doesn't really support ray tracing in very many titles, but this is very, very playable at 4K settings. Super impressive to see from... Oh, look at that glitching that's going on over there. All right, so 56.1 average FPS on 4K. Not bad. Let's go ahead and do... Let's do ultra settings again, but we're going to go to... Okay, let's apply 1080p. Let's not do water Windows borderless. Let's do full screen. Okay, that was rapid. Very nice. Okay, we're on ultra preset. However, I don't want any image upscaling. And everything else still looks good. Great. All right, so now we're at 1080p ultra settings. Let's see what happens. GPU is gunning it. So GPU is at 120 watts. We're pretty much maxing out on the GPU here. And basically just barely able to sustain but if you did 1080p ultra settings if you wanted to this is also another avenue that you can take depending on you know what type of quality you want if you want higher fidelity via resolution or you prefer the settings in ambience that looks sick i think i actually prefer low settings okay so notice right here uh, we just dipped down to about 30 watts Periodically, you can take a look at the, the temps on the GPU itself. We're at 70 degrees Celsius. We're not we're not going down in in power because of uh, temperature reasons. And then we just went right back up, back to 120 watts. So we had a frame dip. We still have those uh, texture errors in the skybox. But periodically, there's going to be a, a thing where the system just kind of dips on power. I just want to check right here that I don't have VSync on. Yeah, VSync was off. Okay, and I don't have any frame limiter. All right, so that was Cyberpunk running very very well on linux for the amd 7600 mxt let's go ahead and take, play some doom eternal see how this runs all right here we are looking at doom eternal uh let's go ahead and take a look at some of our settings here let's do 4k and low settings which seems to be kind of okay for us all right this feels kind of not great so the one thing that i have to kind of note here is that 
I am running the GPDG one out via the HDMI. And that's going to my capture card. And what I'm actually looking at is my preview window. I'm not actually looking at anything else because I need to keep track of everything else that's going on in OBS right now. Uh, so I do have a bit of delay going through this preview window, which is actually running on my other GPD Win Max 2. So I am doing a bit here, but this feels a little bit gnarly for me. It just feels like, I don't know, I can't really get behind it. Even though frame rate looks fine, I'm sure that actually playing it when it's direct would be fine. I'm going to go ahead and lower the resolution here. Let's do 1080p. Yeah, it just feels much better for me here. Okay. And what are our settings just so you guys can see that? Let's go down. We're still low settings. So let's go to ultra settings. Feels kind of gnarly playing through the preview window. All right, so our frame rate's been killing it. If you take a look at how much power I've been using, you can see up on the top left uh, for you guys that I'm um, basically at 120 watts. However, periodically, what has been happening, and this hasn't happened on Windows, it seems to be only happening on Linux with, at least with RADV, I didn't try the uh, official AMD drivers that they have for Linux. I just kind of prefer RADV as it is. All right, so here we are with Returnal. Now, Returnal is a game that is absolutely brutal on the GPU. This is the most GPU-bound game that I have available to me. This thing will just murder GPUs. Even my GTX 4090, this is a game that if you try to push 4K and, like, epic settings, you're not going to be able to actually achieve greater than, like, 120 FPS without DLSS3, which I don't even think is possible on it just yet. Uh, but even with image reconstruction, that's the only way that you're going to be able to do it. So when you take a look at the benchmarks and everything else, like look at our, the GPU right now, we're at 113 watts that is being used, and we're at 1080p epic settings. Going into different settings actually matters greatly for uh, Returnal. Okay, so here is Returnal. We are running at 1080p and low settings right now. You can see that my GPU is being gunned at 120 watts on the GPG-1 or the AMD 7600MXT. And if we take a look, we are running at 1080p graphics. We are looking at low. Uh, max frame a second. Let's go ahead and make that infinite. Let's do some sc uh, screen optimizations. Can Let's try to do FSR and see if that helps us at all. Okay, I'm going to do FSR Ultra Performance. Let's just do Performance because I don't want it to look that grody. All right, so with FSR 2 1080p Performance, which is upscaled from a lower resolution, you can see that we're getting pretty decent performance, and overall the image quality reconstruction is actually pretty impressive, all things considered. But this is a game that's absolutely brutal on GPU. It's It remains the only game that I have that I know for a fact that it'll... Um, murdercate any GPU I throw at it. So this is a game that is especially hard on iGPUs because it's very, very demanding. Uh, this is one game that on the Steam Deck we really, even with, there is no real tweaking. We just need to push more power to the GPU. You need to basically upclock your GPU, uh, push more power to uh, upclock your memory. That's the only real way that you're actually going to get better performance on the Steam Deck. There is no real optimization to have there outside of just doing low settings. You can do some things by like removing stuff, but then you're just making the game look worse. So it's just kind of one of those things where you kind of have to evaluate it yourselves. Let's go ahead and change settings a little. Let's go to, you know, let's see. I'll do 4K. Okay. Keep changes. All right, I'm doing 4K right now, and I have FSR to performance mode. Okay. This is actually pretty decent. Now, I am still at low settings here. So we'll have to see how this actually works when we go up to higher settings. <laughs> Game's already chugging along. It's like, oh, epic settings. All right, epic settings, 4K performance. 50 FPS, not too shabby. You know, the FSR implementation is actually pretty good. Oop, 
again, we just had another uh, performance dip because power went down. You see we had 37 watt, 42 watt. Let's see how long it takes before it goes up to 120 watt. There it goes. Took about five, six seconds before everything, like the chip just went back up again. Um, again, you can take a look at our temps. Temps aren't bad on the chip itself. On the AMD 7600 MXT itself, you can see we're at 73 degrees Celsius. Uh, it's not, it doesn't appear to be thermally related at also on windows. I never had this issue. So it very curious indeed. All right. So that's my look at the GPD G1 on Linux itself. We are also using the M2 adapter that GPD also sells. The link will be in the description field below. If you're interested in the GPD G1 overall, the value is pretty good. If we take a look at the Indiegogo value. Also, if we take a look at the M2 adapter with the OcuLink kit, you're going to be looking at around $70 shipped. However, again, you will not have the actual uh, cover for the older GPD Win Max 2. So you're going to need to figure out how you're going to get that. Hopefully, if GPD hears enough voices that they'll actually figure out a means to actually support this. Otherwise, you're going to need to get this 3D printed somehow, which is unfortunate. Uh, but overall, if we just take a look at the, the value of the GPD, uh, the GPU, the value of the GPU pretty much scales very well with a 4090, like I showed in my previous video. And that's just taking a look at the value of how like frames per dollar. It does not translate for ray tracing. However, you're not really going to get ray tracing with RAD-V anyway on Linux. So at that point, I would assume that you don't really care because this is from a Linux standpoint. But even on Windows, when you look at it through that lens, you're going to be looking at it through res rasterization only and not really ray tracing. So it's a very good GPU for rasterization purposes for traditional games, the majority of all games value wise, but then it's also a dock, which includes a 240 watt power supply. So overall, the value is really good for the Indiegogo price, the the price that it goes to after the Indiegogo price. At that point, you really have to start considering, do you really need it? Um, so that's really going to be up to you if that's there. The other thing that I need to point out to is that on Linux, there is an issue where periodically the power will just, you know, go down like I've showed previously. So be aware of that, that that is an issue on Linux. It is not an issue on Windows that I have ever had happen to me ever on Windows. And I tested extensively there. So this seems to be potentially just a RAD V thing with Linux right now. Uh, I haven't really taken a look at it uh, deeply, but I'm just kind of noting that right here. It only lasts for a second to five seconds before it rebounds and then lasts for a while. It happens infrequently, so there's nothing that I could really do to trigger it. And it's not even temperature-wise, because even when I was running games at 720p, it happens there as well. And we're using far less power, and the temps go down drastically. So it's not temperature-related, it's something else. That's it for this look at the GPD-G1 on Linux, as well as the M2 adapter that GPD sells. As always, guys, I hope this was informative. Thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.